Welcome everyone, thank you for joining our webinar today. Today we're going to cover everything you need to know about BIM ISO 19650 certification. We're Symmetry and our mantra is that we challenge people to work smarter. Your host for today, I'm Hannah Ross from the Marketing Department at Symmetry. We've got Darren Fitz, Principal Consultant and Sector Lead at Symmetry. And we've been joined by Sean McCormick and Bryn Maywaring, who are Utility Scheme Assessors at LRQA. A little about Symmetry, we are part of the ADNO group and we cover areas of design management, process management, lifecycle management. We recently merged with Microdesk, where we now are able to bring more expertise and more technology to support our customers. I'll now hand you over to Darren Fitz, who will cover our agenda. Hello everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we do realise there are a lot of very interesting online and in-person industry events happening at the moment. So we do certainly appreciate you taking your time out of your busy day to join us. We'll do our very best to make this a worthwhile investment of your time. Our agenda today is as follows. For those of you who know me, uh, you will know I always like to share my current industry perceptions and views, and that is where we'll start today looking at current trends. We'll then look at our, introducing our colleagues from LRQA, Sean and Bryn, who will introduce the rebranded LRQA, uh, previously part of Lloyd's Register. We will then explain the certification process, discuss what the value is, and then I will rejoin you at the end to explain the additional support available to you before we move on to any Q&A and a natural close. Of course, it is always good to have an objective when joining these sessions, and we hope the following aligns with your reason for joining us today. If you are an existing certification holder or considering investing in this area, we'll explain the scheme and recent changes. This webinar is also about increasing awareness and understanding, and we intend to provide you with information to assist you in making informed business decisions, which of course leads to your business goals, whether that is achieving full certification or driving business and operational improvement. So there is your agenda and the purpose of today. So let's start with BIM and industry trends. Now, <clears throat> I bet you weren't expecting to see this slide today. Over the last, what is, for many of us, 30 years, we've been having great fun adopting new technologies, moving increasingly from CAD to BIM, authoring systems, experimenting with CGI visualizations and animations, digital analysis, takeoffs, digital construction simulations, adopting data collection devices, whether that is mobile tablets or using laser scanning and drones. And it's not always been easy, but the benefits are very much recognized by those who have gone down this path. But as we all know, the world is changing rapidly around us and information and data management has now become much more serious for many across the industry. And we now need to really up our game individually and collectively to move us forward. Now, what I've personally seen from feedback from many of the customers is that information management and BIM became very serious for designs and contractors from the middle of 2020. This was without any prompting. They all seem to communicate the same thing. And of course, there is always cause and effect. Now, we had the construction playbook, which was published at the end of 2020. And in this 83 page document from government explaining how they actually want to engage with the construction industry. Um, <clears throat> they actually talked about um, BIM was referenced 17 times. Data was referenced 37 times and information management was referenced six times in just an 83 page document. You'll see there that COVID was never referenced, but it never went down to that level of granularity. So from this single document, the construction playbook, we've got a really clear uh, indication of the direction of travel for the industry. It's all about digital, it's all about data. And this was published in 2020. And in that construction playbook, there's a big reference around the UK uh, BIM framework um, and actually working to the guidance that's actually available from that very excellent resource. So if you've not looked recently at information from the UK BIM framework, I would highly recommend that you look at that. And I'll actually help you uh, in achieving your certification if you're aligning to that guidance. 
Unfortunately, uh, we've also got discussions around the building safety bill on the back of uh, the disaster at Grenfell. And we're talking about the golden thread of building information and also about digital standards of record keeping for design, construction, and during occupation of high risk residential buildings. So again, there's a lot of information around and requests for data associated with this. Now the building safety bill, the last time we looked at this was in the 2nd of March. That's now at the report stage at the House of Lords. Uh, so we're expecting publication of that uh, in the near future. And in the building safety bill, I invite you to actually read what's on the screen here. Um, and it's explaining about what its involving, involvement is for building owners. And you'll notice here, okay, that we actually have to hold on to this information. We need this golden thread of information with safety considered at every stage of a building's lifetime, whether that's through design, construction, obviously into asset management and operation. And I'd really want to highlight the bottom statement there, the final uh, um, uh, sentence. Those who don't meet their obligations may face criminal charges. So this is getting very, very serious for the industry now that our clients, our, our customers out there have to now hold on to this data and this information uh, to make sure they're meeting their obligations. There's also a very significant uh, standard uh, that will be published during 2022. Um, it's actually gone uh, through its draft uh, public consultation stage, and this is BS 86441. And this is looking at the digital management of fire safety information. That document, that standard, is a code of practice, and it's uh, basically going to go through its comment resolution May this year. But we're expecting publication of this particular new standard or around data and information uh, at the end of the year. And I'd again uh, ask all of you to keep an eye on this particular standard because it's a very significant standard when it is actually published. And one of the key things here within the standard, again, I uh, invite you to read uh, the text on the screen, um, is that it's been developed to enable duty holders, building asset owners and other relevant persons to manage fire safety information digitally across all built assets in the built environment. And also there is a recognition that this does represent a transformative shift in current practice. So everything we've actually thought about around building information modeling up to date is now moving forward again, and this is very much relating to data and information. What we've also found, and this again is a perception that I've seen in industry, uh, something I've actually seen, is um, we're now finding companies are finding it a little bit more difficult to actually win work, uh, whether it be via their PQQ responses or whether it be actually at tender interviews, uh, whether being more closely assessed around the information management delivery. Um, now, the last time we saw this was back in 2016. Now, back in 2016, we might have had lots of customers out there who've been using Revit for maybe 10 years or so at that point. Um, but when it came down to how they're presenting their information management capability, they were not actually being very successful at that point and actually losing work. We seem to be back in that place again. So again, when it comes down to winning work and bidding, Companies are obviously uh, looking to up their game. And again, it, this is where uh, holding certification can be beneficial. We're also, again, this is a uh, personal perspective. We're also seeing the uh, language change over the years. We've had everything from BIM equaling 3D or BIM costing too much extra money to BIM equal, equaling Revit. We're now seeing a maturity here. We've now moved from BIM being better information management to digital working, to digital transformation. But the key thing is whatever language we're actually using, digital data and information is becoming increasingly important to all of our clients. And of course, that also uh, aligns with the certification schemes out there. Um, Lloyd's Register, um, who originally developed the scheme back in 2012, we saw interest there. As we moved into the BIM mandate, uh, this is when Symmetry got involved with the scheme because suddenly in 2016, uh, we were having our customers uh, turn around and ask us if we could actually look at accreditation certification and provide that as a service. Hence, that way why we went out to market and we partnered with uh, what was Lloyd's Register is now LRQA. Uh, in 2018, we're seeing it increasing even more um, as and then we move into 2019 with the UCAS involvement, uh, looking at being an overarching body for these schemes. We're seeing the interest increase and the value increase over the years. And as we're moving into 2022, uh, we certainly feel 
this is the year for certification schemes around information management, uh, BIM, ISO 19650. And we certainly feel the value uh, can be really realised uh, with investment from 2022 onwards. So that was a personal perception of what we're seeing in the industry. I hope that was useful to you. I will now pass you over to uh, my colleagues at LRQA who will make their introductions. Uh, this will be Sean and Bryn. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Darren. Um, so my, my name is Sean McCormick, just to reiterate, a Senior Utilities Assessor at LRQA. And over the course of the next few slides, I'll be talking about who we are as an organization, as well as covering the certification process relating to specifically to BIM Level 2 and ISO 19650 Part 2. So who are we? Well, our LRQA is a leading global assurance provider. And as a business, our main objective is to bring our expertise and integrity to our partnership with clients through certification assurance, cybersecurity, inspection, and training services. It's important to mention, of course, the sale of the LRQA business, um, uh, which was legally completed on the 2nd of December, 2021. So what this means is that the business assurance, inspection services, and Netitude businesses have separated from Lloyd's Register Group to become an independent company named LRQA under the ownership of funds managed by Goldman Sachs asset management. So the new LRQA brand reflects our heritage and expertise in the assurance and inspection markets. And I would like to stress that for existing clients, there will be no changes to our strategy, quality objectives, management systems, process, or customer commitments because of the separation from LR Group. It will be business as usual with regards to our technical governance structures and the teams that support them. Next slide, please, Darren. So LRQA currently operates in more than 100, 120 countries and are recognized by over 30 accreditation bodies worldwide. And of course, in the UK, the accreditation body is UCAS. We have main offices in Europe, America, Middle East, and Far East, as well as satellite offices in other countries such as Australia. Following a review of our operations in light of the Ukraine invasion, LRQA has taken the decision to suspend all audit, inspection, and surveillance work in Russia and on behalf of Russian companies effective immediately. We are contacting customers in the region who are affected to notify them of this decision and have informed all the relevant accreditation and standard bodies. And we will be monitoring developments in the U Ukraine closely. And of course, our thoughts are with many people impacted by this tragic situation. Next slide, please, Darren. As an assurance organization, LRQA cover a variety of sectors, including construction, energy and renewables, utilities, ICT and telecoms, manufacturing, and marine and shipping, to name but a few. Next slide, please, Darren. So our services, LRQA services cover certification, inspection, assurance, training, and digital and software. One of the services we offer under the construction industry sector, which we are focusing on today, is LRQA's BIM Level 2 and ISO 19652 Part 2 certification. The LRQA BIM Level 2 and ISO 19650 Part 2 certification scheme was developed using various service and sector expertise across LRQA's organization, as well as external expertise with organizations such as Symmetry, who provide a wealth of knowledge and experience in the field of BIM. This collaborative endeavor has resulted in the development of a robust assessment framework, which does not assess BIM in isolation against a set of standards, but rather as part of an integrated system, which constitutes an organization covering critical processes, including organization and structure, HR training and competency, configuration management, procurement and subcontracting, risk management, process control, and performance monitoring. This integrated approach is where we see our scheme differentiating from our main competitors and provides us with that competitive edge. Next slide, please, Darren. So LRQA BIM Level 2 and ISO 19650 Part 2 uh, certification scheme is delivered by the utilities team. And here we see an organogram of the team structure. At the bottom of the tree, we have the team of BIM assessors who undertake the orders for clients. 
Apart from being experienced auditors, the BIM assessors also come with a wealth of knowledge and experience having worked in the construction industry for many years. Some of us, including myself and, and Bryn, um, have also undertaken um, masters in BIM, which we believe gives us, excuse me, <clears throat> gives us the deeper insight into the subject matter and better enables us to assist clients with their BIM journey. In the middle of the tree sits Bernie Woods, BIM certification lead and decision maker who provides technical verification of any BIM audits undertaken by the BIM assessors. And he is assisted by Terry Mundy, BIM certification advisor, and Darren Fitz, BIM technical specialist, where necessary on technical matters relating to the BIM scheme. And at the top of the tree sits Carl Miller, utilities sector manager and decision maker. As well as being involved with the technical verification of BIM audits, Carl manages the BIM scheme, as well as other schemes that fall under the utility sector, which will be touched on briefly in later slides. This structure ensures LRQA provide a professional, robust service for our clients. Next slide, please, Darren. Next, I would like to briefly discuss the certification process, including what it is, types of certification, and the UK's pilot scheme, which what, what, what this means for, and, and what this means for LRQA's BIM Level 2 and ISO 19650 Part 2 certification scheme. Next slide, please, Darren. So first, I'd like to address what certification is. Okay, well, according to ISO 17000, a technical standard providing vocabulary and general principles around conformity assessment, certification can be defined as third-party attestation relating to products, processes, systems, or persons. Okay, and the, the term attestation can be defined as an issue of statement based on a decision that, that the fulfillment of a specif specified requirement has been demonstrated. So in plain language, certification is the process through which an organization grants recognition to an individual, organization, process, service, or product that meets a certain established criteria. Next slide, please, Darren. And of course, we use the term conformity assessment uh, when within the certif uh, certification field a lot. So what does this a term mean? Well, according to ISO 17000, conformity assessment may be defined as a demonstration that specified requirements relating to a product, process, system, person, or body are fulfilled. For example, conforming to a shell clause in ISO 19650 Part 2 standard uh, would mean that your organization has been able to fulfill the requirements of the clause on a project. There are a whole, whole set of standards written on the subject of conformity assessment, which we won't cover today. However, the one that is relevant to today's discussion is ISO 17067, which is a standard that provides guidance for certification schemes. This standard is used by certification bodies uh, such as LRQA to ensure that they follow best practice in the development and operation of their certification programs, such as the LRQA BIM Level 2 and ISO 19650 scheme. The other standard relevant to this discussion is ISO 17065, which accreditation bodies such as UCAS or United Kingdom Accreditation Services use as the requirements to accredit certification bodies such as LRQA as meeting the requirements to deliver assessment schemes to ISO 17067 standards. So for certification bodies like LRQA, UCAS will come in once a year to assess the organization against the standard to ensure that the schemes like LRQA, BIM Level 2, and ISO 19650 Part 2 certification continue to be run competently. It is also this standard which is being used to assess accreditation bodies undertaking the UCAS ISO 19650 Pilot Assessment Program, which I'll be touching on further in later slides. Next slide, please, Darren. So I've, I've introduced you to terms such as uh, conformity assessment and certification. When discussing certification, it is important to note that there are three types, namely first party, second party, and third party certification or conformity assessments. The first party certification is defined by ISO 17000 
as a conformity assessment activity that is performed by the person or organization that provides the object. First party certification, or commonly known as self-certification, is where a manufacturer or supplier provides its own certification that claims compliance with a standard. Although this type of certification has its own merits, it provides little assurance uh, because of the assessment uh, which has been carried out uh, not, uh, not independently, but, uh, but rather by the organization itself. Um, and uh, therefore, impartiality can be called into question. Next slide, please, Darren. We also get second party certification, which is defined in ISO 17000 as a conformity assessment activity that is performed by a person or organization that has user interest in the object. Second party certification is typically where a trade body or membership organization issues a certificate. Again, although this type of certification may have its own merits, second party certification cannot claim true independence from a manufacturer or supplier because it represents its interest in the marketplace. Therefore, impartiality of the process can be called into question. Next slide, please, Darren. We then get third party certification, which is defined by ISO uh, 17000 as a conformity assessment activity that is performed by a person or body that is independent of the person or organization that provides the object and of the user interest in that object. So third party certification is carried out by a body that is independent of both supplier and customer organization and can be seen as impartial. This is important as it ensures there is no conflict of interest. And again, as, as I mentioned, impartiality with the conformance uh, assessment process is maintained. Third party certification provides assurance because the assessment has been carried out independently by, and in most instances, a certification organization recognized by a national accreditation body such as UCAS. Both first and second party certification cannot claim this. So what we are saying is as an organization or individual, if you're looking for confidence in a certification scheme that has been provided by a robust, impartial audit process, then third party certification, a third party certification scheme is the one to choose. LRQ, QA's BIM Level 2 and ISA 19650 Part 2 certification is one such scheme. So finally, uh, before I hand over to my colleague, Bryn Mainwaring, I would just like to cover in more detail the UCAS pilot assessment program. So, sorry, uh, uh, Darren, can you change slides, please? I've... The problem we currently have with a third party BIM certification schemes in the UK is that these schemes have been developed independently without involvement from UCAS. This means that existing schemes uh, do not align and that uh, they're, also no, they're also not accredited in the eyes of UCAS. This has made it more difficult for potential clients to choose a scheme that may provide the best value for the, their business as they're not comparing what I term are apples to apples. Okay, so to address this, UCAS is undertaking a pilot assessment program for the accreditation, accredited certification to ISO 19650 part two. Okay. The, the pilot assessment program is currently carrying assessments against the requirements of ISO 17065, as already mentioned in the previous slides. The pilot assessment program is only available to those certification bodies currently U UCAS accredited themselves. The pilot scheme is in its final stages and accreditation of the BIM schemes offered by all involved uh, uh, is, is uh, imminent. So this brings me to the end of my talk, um, which introduced a general overview of LOQA and our services, as well as the concepts and, pr and principles of uh, cert BIM certification. I'd like to, to now hand you over to my colleague, Bryn Mainwaring, who will take you through the rest of the LRQA slides related to ISO 19650 part two, standards landscape, the process audit uh, approach to auditing and LRQA's certification pathway. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Bryn. Thank you, Sean. Okay, hi, uh, my name's uh, Bryn Mannering. I'm an architect by profession and BIM specialist. 
um, on utilities assessor at LRQA. So following on from, from Sean's introduction, which was, which was great, um, I'd just like to touch on what exactly the UCAS pilot scheme means. Um, so it was, it was under the ISO 19650 part two standard, uh, which was obviously for the delivery phase and it's related to um, um, these other standards, which all fall under the pilot the relationship between them. So there's ISO 19650 part three, uh, which is the operational phase of managing assets. Um, part five, which is about information or cyber security uh, for built assets and their operation. Uh, and these are viewed through the context of concepts and principles defined under ISO 19650 part one. Um, ISO 19650 part, part one is, is, is only a guidance or, or recommendations document, whereas the others are requirements documents or standards. Um, they're all process standards, which means they would be assessed against uh, a process um, standards under ISO 17067, I believe, um, and it's what's termed a type six assessment. Um, and it's important to note that they're all um, processes in designing construction services and construction works within the framework of management systems such as quality environmental asset information security management systems and frameworks next slide please darren so let's look at the key concepts for information management and bin bim conformity assessment um so for looking at conformity to ISO 19650 part two, we're looking at the specific outcome of applying the information management process for the delivery phase. For this, we need to consider the terms capability, competency, and process when discussing an organization or individual's ability to deliver a project. I'll, I'll slightly digress here, but um, the reason um, we've got organization in individual is that the standards are designed in such a way for the scope to cover between one person being an individual who's also an organization, but also multiple people within an organization. So for any scale of an organization. So let's look what we mean by those terms. Capability is the ability to apply knowledge and skills to achieve the intended results. Whereas competency is the ability of an object to realize an output that will fulfill the requirements for out that output. The object in this case is a process in the context of being a service. So ISO 19650 part two is the process, uh, but it's being delivered as a service. Process, the definition of a process, sorry, is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that use inputs to deliver an intended result. With any certification scheme, in the context of organizational implementation, we assess the capability and the organization's minimum ability to deliver against given criteria. That is, do they have the potential capacity and appropriate resources to do this? Within LRQA's BIM business certification scheme, these criteria will be determined by the process approach to the specified requirements, that is ISO 19650 part two, and the scheme requirements. So the scheme requirements broaden um, the the how you would how you, we would see you achieving ISO 19650 conformance um, because um, 19650 Part Two only deals with actions on the delivery phase that are, ass are assigned for a particular project or appointment. It doesn't deal with the management systems, etc. That sit around this. So our scheme requirements also include the capability framework, including the management systems, policies and procedures needed to achieve ISO 19650 part two. So gonna move on to now, what is a process audit approach? Next slide, please, Darren. So the process approach. So this is the systematic approach to management in which an organization identifies, monitors and manage its internal processes and their interactions. This is where 
the connection with management system auditing, such as 19, uh, sorry, ISO 9001 uh, relates. So what it does is it develops, implements and improves the effectiveness of an information management system. And for, for sorry, for an information management system or information management using BIM. Um, and it does, BIM and information management does not operate independently of all other business process, processes. It must be fully integrated. Some, for, to achieve this, some organization have what is called an integrated management system or IMS. So going back to process, an effective process is one where the output meets the requirements of the following process and so on and so on to the end of the process. The process approach deals with these issues as the diagram demonstrates. So I'm not going to talk you through that, um, so you'll have it in the slides at the end, but you'll be able to see how the, that all interrelates. So inputs with the sources of inputs feeding into the process, and then outputs from the process that meet the needs of the receiver of the outputs. And then the, the core process is, is influenced by controls or resources. So the output of one of these processes as you see the outputs often becomes the input to the next so an effective process is one where the output meets the requirements of the following process um, and it and all the way to the end of the process chain and this is the advantage of the process approach in the on ongoing control and linkage between individual processes within a system of processes so let's look now at the certification process in detail and what your journey will be. Next slide, please, Darren. Okay, so this is the certification pathway for LRQA's scheme. Um, it's pretty typical for a third part, all third party certification schemes to be very similar to, to this and to have a two two stage process. And this, this is because it, it sits within the kind of audit approaches and um, uh, methods and procedures that have been developed for uh, quality management systems. So the first following process is typically undertaken to be certified, certif certificated under a cert certification scheme. So the first thing um, you would do is have a, a gap ana analysis undertaken. Um, so this is in preparation for applying to the scheme. Um, and Symmetry offers a gap analysis service that's going to report where there may be potential issues in your, your systems and documentation, um, and it's going to check your readiness for application to the scheme. So this is when the assessment, um, uh, assessment process begins or the certification process begins. After that gap analysis, once you've, you, you would start what's called the stage one part. Um, and in, in, in kind of in simple terms, it's a sense check of the, your documentation and your application. So you provide the application, including supporting evidence for assessment. This has got to demonstrate that you've got documented systems, processes, and resources to meet the requirements of 19650 Part Two. The assessor then checks the application and provides you a report showing any potential non-conformities. All potential non-conformities need the applicant or need you to be able to provide, propose solutions before continuing the assessment process. That is um, stage two. Stage two is what we call a full implementation audit. So that essentially checks that you've implemented your documentation and procedures using your resources on a live appointment or project. So we, we look at this live appointment and we assess that the process of 19650 part two has been followed. And as I mentioned earlier, that, that is because ICO 19650 part two is a specific process for uh, a project or a uh, appointment. So we can only assess it having been done. So prior to this point, it was all about potentially complying now uh, conforming, now it's about conforming. So you're going to provide 
um, your live contracts for appointments for review and associated evidence relating to ITO 19650 outputs. The assessor is then going to um, audit these, these items and it's going to judge whether they conform. After this, the, the, the assessor is going to provide you a report identifying any non-conformities, any, any scope for improvement and any items that need to be monitored going forward in surveillance. Then they're going to make a certification decisions. decision. Once, once you've addressed any non-conformities, provided solutions to them, the auditor will recommend you for certification. LRQA then verifies it and a full certification is provided under the LRQA mark. So then you have certification. But what the scheme also does is it monitors um, your organisation for continued conformance to the scheme. So we have a three year um, surveillance or maintenance of the scheme. Um, and what we do is we we monitor any changes to the scheme, or oh, sorry, any changes to your documentation and procedures, and we carry out a, a, approximately a yearly um, visit or kind of mini implementation audit. And again, a, a short yearly report will be issued identifying any non-conformities, minor non-conformities, or um, opportunity for improvement. Then after three years, we're going to have a full re recertification, which is essentially the same as the uh, full implementation audit um, and potentially a stage one uh, document review um, if there's been any significant changes um, to your documentation, such as, an, um, such as a, a transition from level two or the old PAS standards to ISO 19650 standards. Next slide, please, Darren. So, what is the value of certification? So, next we're quickly going to look at the value proposition for certification. Thank you, so, there's, there's a lot of value in BIM certification. Um, to summarise, it ensures you have a strong foundation for delivery um, because it assures that your information management system, um, in, in, in addition to complementing other systems, um, well, complements your other systems, certifications and assurances. It also helps you stand out from the crowd. It lets industry know you're not just saying you comply and that an impartial third party certification body is judging you as capable. It drives business improvement as it is a tool to aid BIM implementation. And this improves performance, including control over time and cost. It minimizes problem reoccurrence and identifies risks and opportunities in information management at BIM. Um, and finally, it provides confidence and supports winning work because it assures other organizations that requirements can be met and then demonstrates to you and your people internally that BIM and information man management is critical to you. Okay, um, that, that's it for me. Um, thank you for your time and uh, I think back over to Darren. Right. <clears throat> thank you very much, Sean and Bryn. Uh, excellent overview. And thank you very much for explaining many of those terms that uh, I'm sure many of you would not be familiar with. So we're just going to quickly uh, look at extra support when you need it. Um, so first of all, um, obviously Symmetry, we provide lots and lots of training and education to support your business, whether that's actually using uh, the authoring tools, uh, analysis tools that you might be using to produce your designs or outputs, but we also provide uh, many BIM management training uh, solutions, including those focusing on ISO 19650 standards. So if you're interested in any of that, please visit our website and you'll see a full uh, list of all the training and education we provide. 
Once you've gone through that initial gap analysis part, the initial pre-assessment, pre uh, many companies would uh, potentially like some assistance to move them forward, to get them in a good position uh, before uh, moving forward with the LRQA scheme. And we can uh, provide you with a number of services you can see on the screen here. So whether it's actually helping you develop or peer review your BIM execution plans, asset information requirements, help you actually put in place mobilization plans, uh, whatever the uh, documentation you require, we're here to help you. So keep that in mind when you're going through this process, there is additional support that Symmetry can provide if you feel that's appropriate for your particular business. LRQA as a uh, organization provide many, many uh, products, services, accreditation, certification schemes. You can see many on uh, the screen here. And quite often uh, when we're talking with customers, uh, they do discuss things like ISO 9001. Um, now, ISO 9001 certification can be um, um, bought in by LRQA. They can provide that service. And our recommendation is if you're an organization that is thinking about investing in ISO 9001 and also ISO 19650 BIM certification schemes, uh, is to put in ISO 9001 first. That will give you your business systems and we can actually incorporate the BIM processes on top of those. So if you are someone thinking about doing ISO 9001, uh, please think about investing in one that, that first and obviously uh, LRQA can provide that certification service uh, for you. Now, our colleagues, uh, Sean and Bryn, you've, you've uh, met now, um, are part of the utilities team within LRQA and provide a wide range of services, which you can see on the screen here. So whether it be ISO 9650 certifications or ISO 55001, if you're a company associated with this asset management, or if you're doing uh, building offsite, offsite, offsite fabrication, the BOPAS scheme might be of interest to you. So a wide range of certifications, accreditations from a worldwide, uh, worldwide organization, LRQA, are available to you as well. So I think that's the end of our slides and presentation today. Uh, we'd just finally like to say thank you once again for taking time out to uh, spend uh, your busy day with us. We hope this has been informative. And obviously, if you do need any further information, please do get in contact. Uh, thank you once more.